Thanks, um, Kyle Flanagan. Um, yep. Do you need a rest? Or what was the reason behind that? Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, just a part of his development, I thought that, uh, you know, we've been going okay, but, um, you know, I want to keep pushing for more. Lockie Lamb's uh, been uh, training very well and obviously started to bring some energy to our team and uh, another half. So, yeah, just uh, I want to give Kyle the, uh, the chance to take a breath and get some development uh, and opportunity for, for Lockie to come in and, and show his worth as well. Kyle, take it pretty well. Yeah, it's always hard, isn't it, as a, as a, a young player who's driven. Um, you know, he's such a hard worker and a hard trainer. Uh, and he's been, he, he's been physically putting in week in, week out. So I can't ask for anything more there. Um, so it's tough in, in that aspect. Um, uh, but yeah, it's all about week to week and what's best for the team. So uh, yeah, that's the decision this week. So Trent, does he come straight back in afterwards? Is that, I'm just trying to get my head around it after a week off or not yeah no that's you know that's a it's a decision for this week i don't i won't select teams for next week before this week so that's uh that's definitely the decision for this week danny i won't sort of project long term on that so so do we take it as he's dropped or he's rested i'm just trying to understand no, well, it's he's you know Lockie Lamb's got the spot in the seven, and I've got to allow that space for him to to go and play. So, um, you know, I thought it was a time to for for Cole not to play. Uh, he can come back and work on some things that he needs to to keep developing. Um, so, yeah, that's um, you know that's the call for this week. Um, you know, I've never said it was rested or anything like that. It's about. Um, pushing for, I said it after last week's game, I said I really want um, guys pushing for their best and, and Lockie's been patient uh, and he's ready to go this week. What does Lockie bring, mate? What's his, I've seen his energy on the field. Uh, what do you see? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. You know, that he's, uh, he's been a half for a long time, obviously coming through our junior system and, a, you know, Australian schoolboy into... You know our sort of 18s, 20s, uh, and has played halves um, uh, in a, on a couple of occasions for us, Manly and St George last year. He's had to work into a different position whilst having a great off season, uh, and he's come off the bench, given us great energy. He's got great um, connection with the guys around him, uh, and now it's time for him to play this week. To to keep Kyle engaged, what what sort of um, message do you give him? How do you how do you sort of get him through this period then? Yeah, look, if I go through every player that I've dropped that's playing this week in our, in our team, you know, I can, I can go through uh, many players from, um, you know, whether it's Joey Manu or Siwa or um, Mitchell Orbison, who's playing his 300th. You know, this is a part of development of any player. You know, any player that, uh, that's playing rugby league, it's... You know, it's a tough school and, you know, and he's a really tough kid. He's working really hard. Um, and so it's about, OK, take it on the chin, stand up and, and fight hard again. That's, um, that's the way that any player um, week to week has to do it. Hey, Trent, just on Orvo, how's it been this week? Any difference to his other 299 games in prep? Not at all. No <laughs> different at all. He's... Uh, you know, it's it's funny for although it's hard for him these weeks because he gets put to the to the forefront and as he should, you know, he's one of the greatest clubmen that's ever played for the Roosters, and he's playing his 300th game, um, and he he just wants to get on with it. Um, so it's uncomfortable for him, but he should be recognised. Um, it's an honour to coach him, and it's an honour to see him run out there tomorrow night. Would it be fair to say that he's probably like one of the easiest players to coach? Um, can you give us a little bit of an, an insight into into just how he does go about his business? Yeah, it's team first, club first. Um, he his ability to, to change roles is about um, understanding what's the need of the team, and then he goes about um, specialising in that position that he's playing in, and 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 he really wants to work as hard as he can. Uh, to get the best out of himself and the players around him. So uh, that's a, a real positive for... That's why he's a teammate. That's why he is Orbo and that's why, um, 
Yeah, that's why people love standing next to him. Trent, are you, how concerned are you for, for Boyd? Um, it's a couple of weeks now, and can you, can you update us to like, actually how he is and if he's feeling okay day to day? Yeah, he's really good. He's, so he's started back training, uh, is what I can say. So he started back, uh, it was good to see him out on the field yesterday running. Uh, he started weights and, and fitness, so uh, he's getting close to a return. So that's, that's good news, Danny. Are there any long-term worries for you there? I mean, I know how, how, how you guard your players and how you, you care for them in this area. Uh, that's why the rest is there. I think, no, there's not long-term concern. Um, uh, uh, as long as we, um, you know, it's really important that players are really honest about where they're at um, with this and then how they're feeling every day. Uh, and Boyd's been that. Um, which is hard for Boyd because he wants to be out there playing. Um, but we're going to make sure it's the right time. We're not going to rush it back. We're going to make sure he's ready to play, uh, and so will he. Do you have a, a rough estimate of when you, you're like, we're likely to see him? Uh, he's got... So he hasn't done contact or anything yet. It'd be nice uh, for the next couple of weeks um, for him to get that, um, to increase his training uh, today again, tomorrow to keep upping that, uh, and then we'll get a good guide over the next couple of weeks when he'll be back. Trent, can you shed some light on what it's like coaching Sonny remotely and how you actually go about doing that and keeping him up to speed? Yeah, simply, obviously, they've got the program um, that's been laid out for the 14 days uh, from the staff, uh, and then it's about going through... Uh, you know, who we are as a team, he knows, um, but then adding layers on over the last few years about um, what's important to us through video, uh, through PowerPoints, uh, over Zoom. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we've been doing. Just on the get a sense. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, just on the Dragons, they, how dangerous is it coming up against a team who are really, this is a must-win game for them? Yeah, we're hungry. So that's... The focus is us, is, you know, I talked about it after last game, that this game for us, uh, there's a couple of things there. We're playing 150th for Teddy, 300th for Orbo, and we want to improve. We want to get better. Um, uh, you know, we've, we're challenging ourselves to, to keep going after the game. So opposition will always earn our respect, um, but this is, this is us focusing on our game. Trent, you don't often um, give the, the team a public bake. You gave them a little bit of a touch-up in the media last week after the game. What, what were you hoping to do by doing that? No, I was talking about, you know, about us improving. I really want uh, us to improve. I think I singled out the guy that was the best on field and gave him a lot of raps in the video. But it's, uh, I, want, I want to strive uh, for more. I think um, being OK is not enough. And I really want to push all of us, you know, coaches and players, to get more out of ourselves. Um, it's exciting, the mindset, when you, when you go after games like that and seasons like that. And I felt like we needed, uh, we needed a bit of a push in that direction. You approached Sonny a little while ago. And did you sense the team needed something? Is that why you were sort of looking in that area or, or why you're, you're sounding things out? No, I thought um, that the season... Uh, over there was looking ominous um, for uh, that competition in the north of England. Uh, and then also uh, I knew the length of 18 rounds straight. Um, so, and I knew he was a rooster. So there was some reasons there behind that. Um, um, so yeah, that was the reason for reaching out and, and getting in contact. And do you have a, I this is a bit of a, a weird question, but uh, the Lockie Lamb haircut, do you have a view on that? I mean, I know you guys don't usually like the, the different in that area. Have you, is he going to change it for this week? Do you have a view on that, Danny? I'll get yours first, and then I'll give you mine. Oh, look, I'm, I'm, I understand why they're going with this sort of uh, with this look, but it, it wouldn't suit a bloke like me. Um, maybe I don't want to suit you. <laughs> I think COVID's had a big effect on sideburns and blonde hair. That's what I've that's what I've noticed. Um, but. Uh, you know, everyone can be themselves, be who you want to be as long as you've got the values uh, 
uh, of how you want to be as a person and as a player, and you can express it in your own way. Danny? Looking forward to some other haircuts then. <laughs> Hey Trent, how's, uh, how's Jared been this week with that, that calf issue? Yeah, he's been uh, slowly mending, a um, bit sore after the game uh, and it's been improving every day so we, uh, we, uh, we want to get a good run out of him today. Hey Trent, just uh, one from me, who will take the goal kicking duties with um, Carl Flanagan out? Yes, Siwar obviously is a uh, uh, an international goal kicker. Um, he's been doing it uh, for a long time and he's a very good goal kicker. And I noticed last week against the Titans, there were times where the Roosters took the two instead of where they would have traditionally gone for the try. Um, do you want to explain the reasoning behind that as well? Yeah, I think we took it when we were four points up to go six points up. Uh, so that's, you know, quite normal. Uh, and I think we're at nil all as well to go two points up. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I explained it. If you're in a big game uh, and those scenarios are in front of you, you're gonna, you're gonna take those points. Uh, so that was, you know, respecting opposition uh, and respecting the game.